everyone. Uh, thank you, Nalat and Mim. Uh, I'm really excited to be here today. Um, I'll be speaking about the Universal Thirst Gazette, uh, which is a typographic archive and journal. Uh, it shares information, particularly on Indic type, but also on Latin type. And today I'll be taking you through um, our origin story, how we created the Gazette, um, how we curated, and some future plans. So let's begin. Um, it all started off here um, at Esad in Amir. This is where I did my postgrad um, in type design. So I, wo I was working on this uh, typeface in the bottom right uh, called Tiffin. Um, it's a Latin and Devnagri font which uh, we just released with the foundry. And while I was learning both of the scripts, um, what I felt overwhelmingly was that there weren't enough uh, resources for Indic type. Um, there was a lot more for Latin uh, in terms of books and online resources, um, but I was finding Indic and particularly Devnagri for me to be quite inaccessible at the time. Um, an example of this is the typography of Devnagri uh, books. Now this, uh, it's a three-part series by Bapurav Naik. It's essentially the holy grail when it comes to learning about the Devnagri script. Uh, it talks about everything from uh, the shape of how the scripts originated, um, how the metal types uh, started uh, in the country and also the standardization of the scripts. Um, and this has a lot of resources. Um, you have, uh, for example, over here, this is the Nirnaya uh, Sagar uh, type foundry. Um, these were uh, types which were quite prominent in uh, defining many future designs as well. Now the issue that, uh, hap uh, that is there with this book is that it's out of print. And there are probably just a handful of these books remaining in the country uh, in these remote locations that you have to kind of find out. Um, and then what happens when you want to learn more about this? Uh, besides the book as well, uh, if you want to find more type specimens uh, from the Ninaya Sagar, if you want to find um, more information on uh, the history of it, there is a lot out there. There's centuries worth of design, but the question keeps arising of how you can dig deeper and learn more. Um, so while I was uh, researching uh, for my typeface at, uh, at college and also when I graduated, I had this throbbing question in my mind, uh, could I make a resource that helps bridge the gap? And around this time, um, when I graduated a couple of months later, I met these two lovely people. Uh, that's Kalapi on the left and Gunnar on the right. They're here in the audience. Uh, you can say hello to them later. Uh, so I joined Universal Thirst um, uh, as a type designer in 2021. This is the official UT team portrait uh, by Hrefna. We all work remotely, um, so we had this digital photo shoot. And a wonderful practice at uh, the Foundry is the 20% project which essentially means that 20% of our time, we can take up a personal project and something that we're passionate about and that we can work on that. So I had a kind of a aha moment and I was wondering, oh, would this resource that I kept thinking about, would this fit well with, um, with the 20%? So I presented this uh, to Kalafi and Gunnar in uh, 2021 in May. And it essentially was a proposal to create a sort of an open archive uh, that can showcase collected research and uh, documents. So I thought it may fit well with the project, but I didn't realize how it, it would fit. Um, this is a screenshot of a Google Sheet that uh, both of them had made in 2016 of a very similar idea. Um, and they would already started to kind of note down different article ideas and uh, plans of how to create something which was similar. Um, and unfortunately, due to the uh, time commitments when they were setting up the foundry around that time, um, they couldn't take it up. But I was really lucky to have this resource, um, and I was able to collaborate my own ideas with theirs, and this led to the initiation of, uh, the creation of the Gazette. So I was very excited at this time. But then a whole load of questions uh, started popping up in my head. Um, what form would this take? How would uh, the themes be defined? When, how often would we publish? How do we make it accessible so that all people can uh, get information from this? Um, so that comes to the plan. Uh, the first thing that we did was define a timeline. 
Um, this was everything that we could think of, uh, right from the conceptualization of the Gazette, right to the future plans. And though we didn't stick to every single uh, point over here, it still really helped us uh, guide us through the implementation of the entire Gazette. We defined the aim right in the beginning. Um, this was to create an online resource for type design and typography that encourages an active discussion and interest in the subject and provides resources for those who are looking to learn more about it. We wanted to be, it to be quite accessible, um, and, but we had this defined as the audience uh, primarily, uh, which is essentially designers and researchers. Um, but we felt we were keeping this quite close-knit, and uh, it wouldn't really fit with the aim that we were, uh, we were working with. So we changed this audience up, and we included the designers, researchers, and the niche practice, um, but we also included general curiosity. And this is especially for those people who are probably are just entering the field, and they want to learn more about it, um, and they're just like treading the uh, boundaries a bit. Um, so the tone was uh, friendly, warm, and easy to understand. Um, I think this was especially very important to us because we wanted to stay away from a very academic tone, um, primarily because, as I mentioned, many of the resources which were um, there for index scripts out there, they were more academic, um, and that's why they were quite inaccessible. And having such a tone, um, which is friendly and warm, it can create more interest and curiosity in the field. Uh, then this came to us uh, curating the different content that would come um, onto the Gazette. Um, we defined a list of themes that we felt were important um, in the history of the development of different index scripts, plus also um, things that uh, influence the design uh, contemporarily. So, uh, so, for instance, you have the design in the government, which talks about script reforms, um, which changed a lot of the shapes and defined many character sets um, uh, for, for different index scripts. Uh, you have the early uh, printing and the hot metal type, uh, which are a lot of the uh, archival specimens that we, was, uh, we were deciding to share online. And we came up with three kinds of formats to explore these themes, which were archives, essays, and interviews. Um, first up are the archives. Um, I feel that these were the most important, uh, this is the most important part of the Gazette. Uh, the, uh, Universal Thirst has, over many years, collected and curated a very a beautiful collection of uh, type specimens, uh, posters, and other type of ephemera. And uh, we wanted to share this, of course, on the Gazette. Uh, but the first thing that we had to do was organize this archive. And this is where I would insert that I am not a researcher, I'm not an archivist or a historian, and I think this is a reason where I was a little bit nervous to put something like this out there and to approach this. Um, but, I, but I think the excitement and the drive behind the creation of the Gazette just took over, and it just turned out to be a very enjoyable process. So I did some research uh, to figure out how to do the organization and the cataloging, and one such reference was uh, from the Digital Curation Center in the UK. And uh, this kind of helped me not only understand how to catalog it, but also how to keep the archive up to date, um, and how to select things from the archive and, uh, and to share it periodically on the site. Uh, what I also learned from my research and with my aim and planning uh, in hand was that uh, with you can create your own tools and methodology to carry out the project in your own way. We did look at a lot of cataloging apps um, to help us organize the archive, but at the end of the day, we just simply wanted something that would have the information that we needed in hand. So we just created a Google Doc, um, and uh, it just it essentially uses metadata or tags that we defined. Um, the most important bits that we included were for our own reference and organization, and some additional ones for education and learning. And this is kind of how it uh, is used on the Gazette. Um, so this is an example of one of our archives. Uh, this is the Kannada Akshara Galu from uh, the National Type Foundry in Bangalore. Um, and uh, what we essentially do is we always keep the images right on top, uh, so that's the first thing that you see when you open the site. 
uh, and we accompany this by some description or analysis at the bottom, and the metadata helps us in writing this. As well as to the bottom right, you'd see some quick to view information for readers who just want to skim through and see them, uh, see the archive uh, materials. So the Kannada Akshara Galu, um, or Kannada alphabets if you translate it into English, uh, it was printed in the year 1941. Um, and uh, this was in, by the National Type Foundry in Bangalore, and they uh, showcased both display as well as textiles of the Kannada, and this particular style could be characterized as old-style Kannada. Another example of an archive item is uh, this Telugu specimen from the Swadeshi Type Foundry called Arumugam. Um, this particular one is quite special to us because this is where we got uh, our foundry name from, um, Universal Thirst. And uh, it's also special because the Swadeshi Type Foundry was quite popular, not only in India, but also across Southeast Asia. And uh, we've been trying to map out the history of, uh, of the foundry and uh, of the different specimens that uh, we could find. And we also found instances of them in Malaysia and Singapore. Um, and though the history of this is quite difficult uh, because a lot of the material has been lost, uh, we are currently working with the descendants of the original founders to, um, to write the history down and share it with you guys um, soon, hopefully. Um, this is an example from the same specimen. Uh, it was quite revolutionary because uh, this is when they introduced the point system for Telugu type. Um, and they showcase point sizes from 72 to 10 points. Uh, next up are essays. Uh, along with uh, showing information, uh, archival information and uh, images, we also wanted to do some more in-depth um, articles. Uh, first up are research essays, which go more into the history. Um, an example of this is the history of the Bombay Samachar. The Bombay Samachar is the oldest newspaper in Asia uh, to be printed in the Gujarati script. Um, and I was very lucky to be able to access a print from 1878. And I went over to their archives and it started off as just an idea to have some images documented uh, as an archive element. But I found the, uh, the story of the history so fascinated that it just turned uh, into a very long research um, article that I shared on the Gazette. So this person on the left, that's Fardunji Marzban. He's the one who created the, um, the Bombay Samachar. And the image on the right is the first print of the newspaper in 1822. These are some images from uh, the 1878 paper. And it's quite interesting because the actual Gujarati metal type uh, types are lost today. But through the prints and the documentation, uh, we can learn how the design evolved. And it's important because it kind of influenced a lot of the different uh, designs in the area and different foundries in the uh, later years. And what I also felt was interesting was that it shows not only the design of the actual type, but how the type was used. So it shows an insight of uh, graphic design of uh, Indic type. Another example of a research essay that's up on the Gazette is this story of the Devnagri O. Um, if you see the above uh, design, that's the one that's currently used uh, in the Devnagri character set. And the below one, that's an archaic version. So was, when I was researching a lot of manuscripts, the, the bottom one kept propping up, and I was wondering why it suddenly disappeared from school textbooks, and why don't we use this uh, handwritten version. Um, and what I, felt, what I learned was that through script reforms and standardizations, uh, we had to remove certain, um, certain styles from the Devnagri script. Um, so the Devnagri script itself originated from the Brahmi script, and over centuries it evolved and transformed into different shapes in the different, different parts of the country. Um, so the above shape is that's the one which is the archaic shape, and the below one is the O which we use today. So these different evolutions essentially became the Bombay or the Balboat style, which is above, and the Calcutta or the Hindi style, which is below. And it was in the 20th century with the advent of printing and industrial advancements that the government decided that we have to have a simpler character set 
um, and there were a lot of script reforms that took place, and the article essentially explores how they selected um, certain characters and left out other ones to form the final set that we have today in Devnagri. Next up are process essays. Um, along, we've talked a lot about history, and along with history, I think it's important to see how we can use that research and experimentation um, to create new designs today, for instance. Uh, an example of this is the design of a typeface by Anurag Gautam. Um, this is a typeface designed uh, based on the Bancho script. Um, so the article explores how he created it based on some original work by Bangwang Losu. Um, the Bancho are an indigenous community in the northeast of India. And this is the first typeface that was created based on their script. Uh, moving forward, we have interviews. Um, we have many designers from the subcontinent who have contributed immensely to the field of design, uh, but their work has not been substantially recorded. And through our interviews, we wanted to bring them to the forefront. Uh, our first interview was with Mahindra Patel. He's a legend when it comes to type and graphic design in India. Uh, he's also the sweetest and most down to earth Gujarati man you could have met. Um, Gunara and int I interviewed him, and we planned this as a one-hour interview, but he was so sweet, and he talk to talked to us about his entire life that the, art uh, that the interview went on for around six hours, um, and we ended up making this into a two-part series, and each part is also really long. You have to scroll quite a bit, and I apologize for that, but uh, we just didn't want to remove any bits from the uh, from the article, because uh, we wanted to document his achievements and then share them with you. Um, he was a revolutionary in his field. He created designs at a time when uh, they were resisted by his contemporaries, but these same designs are so popular today, and you'll see so many examples of these styles in the, in the Devnagri script. This particular one is designed in 1972. Um, by him, it's a transitional style, and um, UT is actually working with him right now to finish uh, this typeface and uh, publish it along with him. So putting all of these things together um, formed the UT Gazette. Uh, we kept the format as a website, simply because it enabled easy access to everyone around the world, and readers can um, view past articles at leisure. It's also easy for us to keep up to date. Um, now, if you know Universal Thirst, you know that we love emblems. This is our main foundry emblem uh, by Sophie Hollington. It's a depiction of a lion and polar bear, which represents Iceland and India. Um, and we really, really love emblems. We've been handing out these stickers to everyone. Um, and if you haven't got one, please corner one of us. Uh, the whole team is here. And please get them before they run out. Uh, so we felt that for the Gazette, um, a special emblem was in place. So we got this new one by Arne uh, Belstoff. Uh, it's another depiction of a lion and polar bear, but I think uh, this worked beautifully to create our masthead um, of the Universal Thirst Gazette, um, which represented a kind of digital version of the newspaper. And here, it is, here is how it all came together. So this is the final version that is up um, for everyone to access with a lot of different archive um, and articles for you to read and explore. So funding. Um, the Gazette is completely funded in-house by the Foundry. Uh, we've not taken any outside help at the moment. Um, and that is probably why it might be slower for us to upload stuff onto the uh, website, um, because we might not have the resources or the time at the, um, uh, to produce it. Also, it kind of depends on the type of entry. So specimen reviews uh, would, is in, would take a lot less time for, uh, as opposed to research articles, for instance. Uh, but to support ourselves, we do include some uh, stories of our own typefaces. Um, this is one example. So for the release of our psychedelic typeface, Eli, we collaborated with Chitra and Sagarika, who wrote and recited poem, uh, poems in the style of India's Sangam literature. We've also um, set up a small shop uh, where we sell some fun type stuff. Um, this is a specimen book of our typeface, Seismic. Uh, it's a limited edition run, um, and there are only three copies left. So if you want to support the Gazette, please go up and uh, grab one 
uh, if you like. Um, okay, so I may be up here talking about the Gazette, but there is a whole team behind it. Uh, we have Emma Tucker, who is our amazing editor. Uh, everything goes through her. She combs and finesses through all our words before we publish them. Uh, and Paul Sturm and Abhilash, uh, they're the ones uh, who have created and developed the entire website. And of course, our list of amazing contributors without whom we won't have uh, all of the amazing content up there. And that brings me to collaboration. Uh, this is just the start. We're still a very small team, um, but with collaboration, it can definitely grow and we can share more resources and knowledge with each other. So if you have an idea, or uh, if you've thought of something right now, I'll be around, please come up and say hello. Uh, and you can also reach us uh, on Instagram and email. Uh, this is the website if you'd like to take a look uh, and read some uh, articles. And that brings me to the end of my talk. Thank you.